Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, glad everybody found the link right, and I actually was able to follow the directions that Mel gave me on how to get this out there to everybody with a different link. Thank you for showing up. Uh, I really had no idea. Mel just kind of said, your turn, come up with a topic. And <laughs> this is all I could think of because it was my biggest problem when I decided to become a caller and was talked into becoming a caller was had no idea what I was doing and no idea where to go, uh, how to learn to be a caller other than all the other dancers basically said, you need to go to caller school. And I went to caller school and I didn't understand anything they were saying. It was like a completely different language. So it's, it's my idea for this session was to try and get people to think of, try to get experienced callers to think of and come up with ideas, which in the end, I'm hoping that I will get from you guys more ideas about stuff to put on the Orange County Callers Association website as resources for a new caller to do, ideas for a new caller, somebody that wants to be a caller, where they can go or what they could do to make it easier for them. Well, a whole bunch going on out there, isn't there? I was just going to say, <laughs> you know, somebody jump in. <laughs> I think yeah. so. My suggestion would be that a, a new caller, before they go to caller school, learns the vocabulary. That there's that there's some place that we have lists of, you know, this is equivalent to that. You know, the at a zero box and a corner box and a one p two, you know. 4P or whatever that's called. Though those are all the same <laughs> things. Um, you know, it um because when I started, I have I've had one caller school and it was all zeros. And it it totally mixed me up because <laughs> I hadn't a clue. I'd, nobody had talked caller vocabulary with me ever. And um so I'd just been doing what was on the cue sheet of the singing call and I hadn't a clue what was going on. Was well, nothing wrong with the caller school. It was just that I didn't have any anything to go by. Okay, uh, since it's so quiet, I'll I'll jump in. <laughs> um, I've done uh, quite a number of caller schools, and what I do is um, I send out. I have a, a at least well several pages of just what Yolanda is talking about. Um, uh, I, I do a general pattern and it's not based on site calling. Uh, I don't think a caller should learn by doing site calling to start with anyhow. It, uh, too many callers use that as a crutch um, and never really learn about programming and theming and, uh, and really flexibility. Uh, so what I do is it's um, uh, vocabulary because just like Mark said, I hadn't a clue. You know, this terminology, nobody helped me. Um, in, in, in the basic form, formula that I use is uh, how to set dancers up into either a, a box or lines. And of course, old school, we say box one, four, or one P, two P lines. You can say corner box or partner lines. Uh, so so I, I explain how you set them up into one of those two setups, which is like head square through four hands, you're in a corner box, boom. Now, you can call all your zeros and equivalents from there if you want, which is sort of like a, um, a modules on that one side. I talk about how you can take them from there across the street to the other side. Daryl will know what I'm talking about, sure, <laughs> you know, because he's, he's mentioned this before. Um, if you put them into lines, okay, how do you do that? Heads lead right, circle to a line, bam, there you are. Now, call all your calls. Um, you know, you, you do have, then the get out, of course, makes a difference. You, you got to bring them back to either a, a box setup or a circle setup. But um, I didn't hear the original stuff you were talking about before this started. 
but it sounds like you were uh, talking about uh, different setups. And anything you have really is basically related to a circle anyhow. If you have one P, two P lines, join hands, circle left. You got a circle. It's just a straightened out circle. If you have ocean waves, that's a circle. Is, is he frozen for everybody? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's moving, he's, he's moving, but I lost audio from him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you oh, froze there he on is. us. There he is. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put something in the chat. <laughs> okay, so that was once I started learning. Uh, hmm. A little bit about it. I started understanding. I had one caller that uh, was talking to me, and he was talking about uh, it was the one p the whatever. So there's to me there's different version. There's different languages of square dance callers. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe said it, and the best way I can think there's old school and new school, and then there's a somewhere in between there. Uh, but the one they were talking to me in one P two P and I, he explained to me what it was and I kind of understood it and I got, I was starting to understand it. And the next, uh, next time I went to another one of their meetings, it was for a caller association. I went to another meeting and these other guys were there and they were talking about, and then they were talking in, uh, uh, partner lines and corner box. And I had no idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a problem I had. Okay, yeah. I got Betsy. I think if I'm reading this right, I think I got Betsy first and then Brian. Okay. If I were going to talk to some new caller now before they started, I would tell them to go to the Caller Lab website or failing being able to negotiate the website, call the office and ask for the starter kit for new callers because it gives you a lot of background that you can study in the privacy of your home so that you have a basis for what in the heck you would do. Ask, you know, if you go to caller school and you don't know what they're talking about, you might have a basis by studying the starter kit for newer callers. You might have a basis for asking questions rather than just going, Oh my gosh. It starts off, you know, there's, um, hang on, it's how to use this kit. And then it has formations, uh, approved formations, pictograms, term, definitions of terminology such as formation, arrangement, sequence, uh, relationship, setup, get in, all the, all the things that caller coaches start talking about when you have no idea what they're talking about. It has some of those. It has the analyzing a call sheet. Then it talks about music, smooth body flow, and goes on from there. But it's, I think it's still $25. And it, to me, I would tell somebody to buy that and start to look at it before you go to caller school. So if that doesn't scare you away, nothing will. If if we want to encourage people to become callers, why would we only offer that in printed form and charge $25 for it? Yeah. That's weird. Exactly. Too much stuff. Well, thank you, Betsy, because I didn't know it existed, so. Yeah, I heard about and I, and it. And I think somebody said they were up last year or something that they were upgrading it so not to get it until the new version was around. I don't so. There's a, yeah, there's a 2022 version. I, I'm looking at it, but it's not available online. You can only get it hard copy for $25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably more in Australia. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but somebody was saying that because some of the calls had changed for the different levels that that had to be adjusted or something. Same as Yolanda, when I was learning, I had trouble with the terminology. And I didn't know what a get in or a get out was for a long time. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what they were talking about. I thought, 
singing call, maybe not, <laughs> but it was high down. Yeah. So, mm. Brian, why don't you go minute, ahead? When I, the first day that I started, I thought um that all the patter would start from the position of a static square i didn't realize that it, they started from like a corner box or a partner line so <laughs> that took a while for me to click in and that that's what they you know so i was visualizing it the wrong way mm. from where i started so if if i was getting or if i was being asked to give advice on uh what to what to tell a, a newbie or a new person where to get information or, or what to do to become a new caller. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, is that they need to find a, a local mentor. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the downside to that is that not everybody in your local area is willing to do that kind of work. And, um, you know, you, you also have to realize that that's a possibility. Um, it wasn't until uh, I joined Caller Lab that I realized that the vast majority of members in Caller Lab were more than willing to to share time or spend time with you, and uh, that that's that's probably one of the better places to find a mentor. And although they might be you know halfway across the country, uh, they'd be much better mentors for you than maybe even some of the local callers. So what the local callers can give you is they can give you mic time. They can give you uh, time at the club, which is very valuable. That's it's uh, you know, out of all of the things that I got locally, um, you know, I was able to get a lot of mic time. Um, you know, but nobody nobody here locally really sat me down and said, "Hey, this is how you put choreography together. This is how you do stuff." <coughs> they just assumed that I already knew how to do it, and they just gave me the mic and said, "Go." Um, and so, as I say, it was it wasn't until I got to Call It Up that I started to realize that there's there's a plethora of material uh, out there for people to learn, and there's a large portion of callers who are more than qualified and certified to teach that material and present it to you in, in whichever way you want. Um, and then on top of that, uh, there's there's no end of of different organizations that offer grants for you to get paid or get money or or subsidize your your trip to whatever school you want to go to. So those are the kind of things that I would tell to a new caller. I would also tell them to join Caller Lab and and go to the convention so that they can physically meet those other people uh, because most of the people who attend are very interested in the um, and the sharing of education amongst callers. It's a it's a very giving organization, and that's all I got. Okay, Daryl. Okay. Uh, the thing was, what are you going to tell a brand new caller that's just starting out? And now I I kind of figured that this session would be more to the mentors than anything else because of that question. And I would tell them right up front, learn as many singing calls as you can manage. Singing calls. Because they're going to be putting together slightly different uh, figures throughout, right? They don't have to understand grids and sequence and phasers and all of this other stuff. Heck, fire, they, they're, they're, they're going to be swamped right up front. This, what we do is not easy. I don't care what anybody says. It, it's not easy. Don't scare them away. We need as many new callers as we can get right now. But, uh, yeah, learn the same calls. Now, they're not going to understand that they're not lyrics. They'll learn them the same way that they would if they were learning a song. But what, that's going to give them something to do at the club dance if they've got a mentor or, or if they've got callers that are willing to put them up for a tip. They're not going to learn much from it. Uh, from what I've seen through my years of calling and training callers, you give uh, the new caller a chance to get up at the club dance. Typically, if they're only calling that one tip 
per month, they're going to do practically the same tip over and over and over and over again. So they're not going to get a whole lot better at it. Callers call. And you're going to learn to call. You've got to call a lot. The more you call, the easier the calling gets. And the better a caller you're going to be. Uh, they need a good start. Good start is going to be in singing calls. It gives them a chance to get up there in front of dancers, in front of live dancers, do something, get fairly familiar with being up on the stage, uh, maybe get some pats on the back for doing a good job and make them get a little bit excited about coming and learning more. But don't swamp them with uh, 72 different uh, formations and FASR is F formation, arrangement, sequence, relation, blah, 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 blah. Uh, heck, that would scare anybody away. Give them a simple approach to getting started. Now, some of you I know have been, you're here, you're calling yourselves newer callers, uh, but you've been calling four, five, six, eight years or something, you still consider yourself new. Partly uh, because you're not getting a lot of experience up on the microphone, up on the stage. Uh, and we're all learning, yes, everybody continues to learn, myself included, and I've done this a long, long time. But you've got to make it easy on them, you've got to make it fun. They've got to want to learn more, you've got to give them a reason to learn more. But the thing about those uh, singing call figures is they're all based on corner progressions. Every once in a while, you get a right hand lady progression. But 99% of the time, it's going to be a corner progression, which is one of the two Alamand lifts in square dancing. And there's only, there's only three. One of them is in the uh, circle figures that Joe was talking about. Everything's in a circle. Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, I don't think of it that way. I think of it uh, in a circle, like Alamo style waves and stars and things, circle left, circle right, Alamo and left. But the rest of it's done in that grid of dancers that's either going to go east, west, or north, south. You've all heard me say this before in these sessions. Everything is two couple calling because of your mirror image or diagonal opposite, whatever you want to call it, it's two couples here, two couples there, and you can pass through that center and get from one to the other. The same call figures are very short. They take you quickly to the corner. Once they know those figures, they can learn them as traffic, very short and then start giving them a few new modules to go with it, zeros or equivalents. But still, all you're doing is going back and forth across that or changing the direction for here. <laughs> Keep it simple. And if you start slowly with them and add it to them slowly, give them a way to go home and look at it and say, okay, I can see that now. Work with them. They need mentors. Uh, to try to learn what we do without somebody that does understand it has got to be tough. Uh, and there aren't that many callers today to learn from. Now, let's face it, we've lost most of them that we had, and we're going to lose a lot more within the next couple of years. So try to take on the job of finding somebody, train your own replacement, basically. And hopefully you can train three or four of them all at the same time. But that, I'll shut up because I know I have a tendency to run off the mouth too much. No problem, Daryl. The more you talk, the less I have to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bill, go ahead. Your turn. Oh, thank you. Um, my experience as far as, you know, when it comes to caller schools or things out there, I started dancing, taking classes and to learn to dance in 1977. Calling fascinated me from the first night I went in to take classes because Daryl said that when he was talking about singing calls, I was in school choir from sixth grade. So music was a big part of, and I asked that caller, I said, how do you become a caller? 
he said, first off, give yourself at least three years of dancing because you're going to be a teacher as well as a caller. And so you got to have that solid background. So, and then when it came in 1981, I got together with a local caller in Sacramento. His name was Roger Morris. And he occasionally would put on a, I guess you'd call it a caller school, but it was just a mini school. He didn't take any more than 10 students or less, no less than six. He had a, a, a building where he had his square dance club and his wife ran a clothing store. And we had a, we, every Sunday for eight weeks, we met there about noon and was there for the entire afternoon. And he taught us what I would, I would consider to be the base, the fundamentals, the basic fundamentals of calling. But one of the things he said to us, and I always remembered it, he said, when you get through with this class and you get there, don't go out and try to get yourself hired by a, a, a regular club. You're green, you're new, you're going to make mistakes and people and dancers don't forget. He said, and I quote, get yourself a bunch of people together that don't know how to square dance because they don't know, you don't know what you're doing. And that essentially happened. I, I got, I was fortunate enough to get a, a youth teen square dance club and they absorbed stuff like sponges and I had them for three years. And that gave me a lot of, uh, a lot of experience. Plus my parents belonged to Thousand Trails campground system and they used to have uh, square dances up there at the park. And one day, the one of the rec director was looking for a caller, and my mother says, "My son, my mom, I just got out of school three months ago, and I did these one nighters for years, and it, it was a great experience." So, uh, and I agree with uh, with with Daryl as to uh, find yourself, find new callers, find a find a mentor. I may not be calling actively anymore, but I have a lot of experience up here and i'm willing to share it with any newer caller and and give them ideas on how to pursue their the activity and i wish them luck and i'll shut up now thank you nobody's talking Okay, anybody else got any more? <laughs> I was going to say, nobody was talking. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark. Yes. Mark, um, I started about the same time as Bill in 1977. I walked into a square dance, and the, the square dance caller was uh, an ex-ballroom champion, and he recognized me from ballroom because I was a ballroom teacher in the 60s. And um, he put me straight into dancing. First, within five minutes, I was dancing mainstream. And um, <laughs> at the end of the night, he gave me a record my way. He said, listen to both sides of that record. And that was the first night. And um, three months later, I was in an amateur callers competition. Um, there was about 35 of us. I think I came seventh. And, um, but we had seven trainee callers at that club. And I, so I was one of seven and, um, Bill McCarty was my, the late Bill McCarty was my teacher. And, uh, before I, uh, went into the amateur callers contest, I'd learned three records. And so, uh, it was an interesting way of starting. And, and when I started teaching other callers to call, I'd give them, I'd get them to learn a square dance record, but I would tell them to just call the cues only, not the words of the song. So they would, they would call only the actual prompts of the, of the, of the dance and um, then fit the number of words they could fit in at a later stage because too many people try and fit too many words in and they don't get the instructions out. So uh, it's just one thing to be careful of.
Okay, uh, Betsy? Yeah, I, I can remember, and that was so much easier when we used records rather than digital music. Uh, I could go in the file cabinet and get out all the records that I hadn't been able to use myself and pass them off to a new caller and say, here, take these, practice, use that music. I can't do that anymore with the laws about digital music. Unless somebody has a, something that plays a, 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 an actual record, uh, I can't give the music anymore to start with. They still would have to make some sort of commitment to purchase some music. At least here in the States. And the license. Well, they don't have to purchase they don't have to purchase the license to practice at home. But they would have to purchase music because I can't loan it to them. That's true, and there's not that many. Matter of fact, I can only think of, I can't remember which label it is, but I know there's a label uh, that has one song on their list of singing calls that you can download for free. I think Buddy Weaver's got a couple out there that uh, are freebies. I think and it's something about pants hanging loose or something like that. I can't remember the name, something, but it's got something to do with loose pants. Oh that's my! That's the only one I can think of. That's just hang free. loose. Hang loose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can Hawaii, but that would be that would be important information to give to a new caller is where they could possibly find a free download. Of course, they'll all be doing the same singing call, but that's a start. <clears throat> This is just hang loose. It's a Hawaiian thing. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I have I have an original hoedown that I'd be very willing to share if you've got new callers that you can give it to. And I won't yell at you if you use it yourself. But you have to get a hold of me and I'll send it to you via email. Okay. Okay. Uh, was that it, Betsy? Okay, Glenn. Looking for the mute button, looking for the mute button. So I, I, I don't know if you want to hear from the other side that I am a new caller, but uh, I, I've been looking at this for a long time and looking at calling in general and, and how we do the square dance world in general. Um, so I've got some ideas if, 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 I, if I can speak. So the first thing I'd tell somebody is get familiar with something like Tamination, something that you can try out choreography on and play with choreography and read and reread the definitions and figure out why things work the way they work. Uh, somebody's always already mentioned get a get a mentor. I have a great mentor in Brad Caldwell. Um, the other thing I would tell somebody looking at calling is Oh, Brad Caldwell, Caldwell is certifiably insane. Just right, forget. right, exactly. Um, <laughs> the other thing I would tell somebody thinking about calling is ignore all that extreme vocabulary, ignore the site calling methods, ignore all, all the stuff. Callers like to impress each other and, and, and make things way over complicated. And that's not the place to start. Calling is so hard as it is, you wear so many hats, there's so much to learn, so much to do, that, that trying to start by learning, um, oh, what's, uh, what's Jerry Story's uh, site calling method or, or method? Anyway, trying to learn any of those is just crazy from the beginning. I, I think you got to get out there and start calling. That being said, um, there's a caveat to that, and that is 
I think, I, I think, and I think Bill mentioned it, starting a club, uh, start, you know, finding a square of newbies is a great idea. Although, and this is, this is the caveat, I've seen too many people try to learn to call while they're teaching. And I think that's a big mistake and a disservice to the students. I think you should present every single class as if it's a dance. I think you need to do the same level of preparation, um, which is also why I, I'm planning on totally avoiding site calling. Um, everything I do will be either memorized or written down and with a lot of preparation. Um, the other thing I would say is what we're doing in general isn't necessarily working. Don't be afraid to try thing, something different. Um, find or write uh, and memorize modules. I think that modules, there are callers that will tell you they're site callers, but you dance to them and you're seeing the same patterns over and over again. You know that in their brains, they have developed uh, modules and they call it site calling, but they're calling modules. It just, yeah, anyway, I've always said prepare, prepare, prepare. Oh, get a vocal coach. I think that, uh, that having a vocal coach to help you with that delivery can help a lot. Um, some people maybe don't need it so much, but a lot of callers do. <laughs> um, that's, that's all I have. Okay, um, I do. I like the one point you brought up there, which Daryl's brought up before, and I've heard it the most from him. I'm not sure whose term it is, but I've heard it the most from Daryl, but keep it simple. Uh, I've been to a couple different practice groups with different callers in the Orange County Callers Association, and we've had some new callers, a couple of new callers that wanted to learn to call, and I know uh, one of the things I was always told if you want to be a caller is you got to know how to dance and you got to know how to dance more than just the boys part if you're a boy or the girls part if you're a girl. You should learn to dance both parts. And but these new callers that really had a problem with their chore with their chore chore yeah that word always gets me with their figures uh, was they were like C two dancers. And they were trying to get everybody to, they were un, weren't understanding why the floor was breaking down when they were calling their tips. And it was too complicated. They weren't keeping it dumbed down enough, I guess you would call it. I don't know how to say it politically correct or whatever, but uh, keeping it simple, I think, is an important thing. All right, Daryl, you're up. Oh, thank you. Yes, definitely. Keep it simple. I made myself some notes that I was going to use here. Uh, and it started out pretty much by what a lot of you said already. The language. Keep the language simple. Where they don't need to know about all of the, the technical stuff. Uh, hey, and hey, gang, what we do I said it's not easy. It isn't easy, but it is simple. Everything is module calling. I don't care if you sit down and write it down. You're going to write a group of calls. All of a sudden, it's a module. It doesn't have to be a zero or an equivalent or or a uh, conversion module or inversion module or uh, whatever. That's a group of calls that work well together. If you put them together right, they are going to flow, right? And you're going to be able to use, we only have so many movements at each program level. You're not going to write something brand new. There is nothing brand new. It's been used over and over and over and over again, particularly in singing calls. Let's don't make it any harder than what it really is. You're gonna start a new color on pattern, Start with the chicken plucker. Why? Because that's what we do. We go back and forth. 
Now you might go across as a couple circulate. You might do so do to wave and have the ends circulate or the, you know, the centers circulate, which is just moving back and forth across that same grid of dancers, just in a slightly different way, but we're still doing the same thing. So if they can get familiar with the eight possible positions, actually, uh, I think it's more like 12 possible positions in that grid, uh, figuring that you got head square through four, they're standing in the corner box or box one four or zero box, whatever you want to call it, right and left through, they're standing in the next place, pass through or dive through, they're standing in the next place, Trade buyer centers pass through, that's the next place. Right and left through, that's the next place. Dive through, pass through, they're back to the corner box. Now you can add to that from those corner boxes or box one fours, a pass through, which puts you in a trade by position, which is important to know because I said there's two element left. One of them is in the corner box or an eight chain through formation. The other one's in the trade by formation. And that's the one that you get from your zero lines. And they're both in that grid. There's one other element left you can get and that's in the circles. And typically when you say head square through four, the circles are out of the picture. Circle figures are more like element bars. They're, Four ladies chain straight across men's star right to the corner, blah, 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 blah. And that's all done typically by uh, all the dancers at the same time, rather than two couples here, two couples there. Now we have dancers, uh, stuff that we call in that grid that involves all eight dancers at the same time, spin chain through, all eight circulate, eight chain through, eight chain four. Uh, those things like that, they require all the dancers moving. Trade by does. But usually what happens is just two dancers, two couples of dancers, and headed for a final result of one of two different element left formations. One of them may chain through the other trade by formation. So now if they can learn that traffic pattern that's in chicken plucker, I like to call it basic traffic pattern because it is the basis of all of our movement. That's the basis. That's the places that you can go. Um, nobody yet has been able to tell me in symmetric choreography, in our normal dance traffic, and another traffic pattern that doesn't fit in there. I, I would love to see it if you've got one. But you can keep it simple if you show them that and how their singing call figures fit into that. I don't care, the heads promenade half, walk in square through four, right and left through, rear left, Ferris wheel, you're right in that grid, center square through three, you're right to that corner box, aren't you? And if you can do that and, and then add the partner uh, lines or partner boxes uh, in the trade by Alaman left, you've got it all as far as knowing the mechanics of what we do. So with that, and I hear I'm running on and on and on again. Sorry, I'll shut up. No, you're good, Daryl. All right, Joe, uh, and before you start, Joe, Joe put a file in there. I haven't looked at it yet, but there's, he put a file in chat, the, the magic of square dancing, I think. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just something that I send out to uh, callers before they come to caller school. Um, you know, again, when you read through that stuff, you can claim what you like and discard the rest. Uh, but it pretty much is what Daryl has been talking about, the same sort of a thing. Uh, you know, if you set them up the box one for and you do the chicken plucker stuff, um, it, it works. Uh, as far as a vocal coach goes, my, my feelings on that, and by the way, my background is extreme music education, by the way. Um, it's That's what I did for a living before I uh, um, went crazy and became a caller. Uh, so I, I have a little bit of knowledge about what these people do. Um, there's a difference between a vocal coach and a, and a voice teacher and whatever. Uh, the, the biggest thing is, 
when you tell a caller somebody news, use your regular voice. You know, don't try to sound like some, you know, Willie Nelson or, or you don't want to sound like Daryl Clendenin or Joe Ubelacker. You want to sound like you. Just use your regular voice. And when you sing, the same thing. Don't don't try to mangle the words. So many times I hear a caller, they have a beautiful resonant voice, and uh, they talk normally, and they put on a singing call, and they mishmash the words and sound weird. It's because they're trying to be somebody or sound like somebody, you know, somebody else. Uh, as far as the vocal, vocal quotes, you have to find someone who will help you in voice presentation uh, to do what you need to do. They have to learn what you need to do. You don't want someone that's going to be teaching you scales. Uh, yes, there's ways of warming up and practicing, but you know what? As a caller, uh, unless you have a problem with your voice, you do not need it. Um, the biggest thing is with, uh, as we get older, especially, I'm sorry, ladies, but many women develop what we call a tremolo, and that's a very fast vibrato, and uh, you hear them mostly in church choirs, you know, they stand out because their voices, it sounds like they're nervous. Uh, that's something that can be controlled, okay, and a, a good voice teacher, that's what they'll do for you. They'll help you overcome those things. They'll help you with breathing. Uh, again, breathing, it's, there's no magic to breathing. Suck it in, blow it out. Uh, you know, if you have a problem, then yes, seek the help. Uh, now that thing I put in there, I, I uploaded to the uh, the thing. Um, again, it you know, if that can help somebody find, pass it along, no problem. As far as somebody buying, having to buy a record to practice on or do something with, that is the price of getting involved. Before they spend two thousand dollars on, um, well, it's not two thousand up here; it's two thousand dollars on a Hilton two twenty. You know, I've had new callers get, get these little little amplifiers and a crazy little microphone and all. Uh, some of them find on on the uh, Kijiji or Craigslist or whatever, they find a record player, you know, a phonograph. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be variable speed. Get something to play a record if you need to. Uh, but uh, us experienced callers, we need to to give these people something. You know, how how can we retire? <laughs> I mean, we got to die. I think um, for some of us, that's probably what we'll do before we retire. So, uh, like Daryl says and and Betsy says, um, you know, these these are callers that give, 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 and you know, there's just so much give you can do, but. Uh, I think, too, tell them where to go online and look at these, Mel's, Mel's uh, sessions and uh, Don Beck's sessions. Fantastic material. You know, yes, some of it gets a little bit complicated, but that's part of the learning process. You know, you got it. You, go look at it. Uh, I do it now. And, you know, I, I've got a special dance coming up in a couple of weeks here. Um, and I've picked up a number of things that just, they're going to make the dance fresh for me. Uh, and there are things I've done in the past I forgot about. But, you know, get on the YouTube channels and anything you can. Download. Uh, ask away. Don't don't be intimidated. You know, tell them. Don't be intimidated by a caller if they, they yell at you and say, well, like I said this morning in my session, uh, I asked my, my caller. <laughs> The guy that taught me, I said, how do you know how to call? And he, he barked out, zeros and equivalents. And I, the way he said it, you know, I said, oh, oh, sure. <laughs> I went away stupid as ever. So, you know, that's that's my two cents worth. Okay, Betsy. I want to I wanna go back to, to uh, talking about the voice coach. You, you don't necessarily need one unless you're struggling with how, how you're projecting and how you're coming across. Sometimes people haven't developed their projection capabilities, but I was just listening to uh, one of the vo sessions from the recent Caller Lab convention on voice. And one thing that new callers would need to know is that if you seek a voice coach, you need to interview them by letting them know what it is we do 
give them some idea of what we're trying to do. We're not trying to be an opera singer. We're not trying to be, um, uh, we're not trying to rap. We're not trying, although it does sometimes sound like white rap, but we're, we're, we need to let the vocal coach know what it is we are trying to do so that they can direct us in the right way. And if the vocal coach isn't listening to you, don't hire them. I, that, that's basically what I got. One of the things I got off this uh, voice session, Deborah Carol Jones had worked with a vocal coach because she had some problems. And she says, if they won't listen to you, if they're not interested in hearing what you are trying to do, that's not the coach for you. Right. Okay, Roz. Yeah, I did do singing lessons because I can't sing. So, and I found it very beneficial. Um, and she did listen and she understood what we were trying to do. And, and she said, you're up there to entertain as well. So you need to have that in your voice. So, so she was very good. I still need a lot of work on my voice, but I'm a lot better than what I used to be. And it was worthwhile, but she was very good. Uh, I could recommend it, especially since I can't sing. You want to tune in next week to, or not next week, August 6th to uh, down, down uh, Newbie's Callers. Uh, my ses session there has to deal with uh, both patter and singing calls and how to, um, how to use a singing call when you can't sing. Uh, it's good that you can recognize that because <laughs> there's a lot of callers that don't know they can't sing and they try and you you know the dancers cringe but there are ways of delivery like the old george burns method of speaking it uh by the same token if you're experienced in ken sing there's tips on how to use that same method of delivery uh combining it with singing that will really uh, uh sell a singing call you know uh, i don't know if, how many of you know the um oh the songs like uh, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, uh, old old dogs and watermelon wine, that kind of thing, where you can speak, oh. say two two lines of the verse. You know, uh, what what is uh, I like my coffee black. I like my something something blah blah blah. You can speak it and say it, just like George Burns did with his. Um, I wish I was 18 again. That's on a record somewhere. Um, yeah, you can speak those things uh, and, and do it. And it's so effective and you don't have to have a, you don't have to be in tune with the record. So um, yeah, August 6th, tune in. <laughs> Sorry for the blatant advertisement. Um, the more people sign in, the more I get paid, you see. <laughs> that, that's on Facebook, isn't it? Good luck on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been in a few sessions. Uh, Yolanda has some experience with it because she's one that I remember uh, where the caller would practice using another caller as I'm trying to remember who did it who did uh, was it Kip Garvey that did we did you that one time Yolanda or who was it I think it was Tom that's right Tom Miller mm-hmm yeah uh, it was a newbie callers from Caller Lab, the new caller committee, and they were having uh, given mic time on Zoom, and I was amazed. I mean, Yolanda did her first one, and it sounded, she sounded okay, and then she went off into her room, and Tom Miller did Tom Miller did his magic vocal coaching with her, and she came out and she did it, and I was like, wow what an improvement she sounded so awesome so i think it's it's definitely what the, what you guys are saying about a vocal coach knowing what we do is a very important thing yeah i was i was having trouble expressing to her i knew she was focusing my vocal coach i knew she was focusing on the wrong things um and i kept trying to tell her you know, yes, I got to get the music right, absolutely, yeah. and, and the singing is important. But what's even more important is getting the, co the, the calls enunciated clearly, 
um, and, and making a difference in the delivery between the calls and the um, singing portion of the of the singing calls. And finally, I just I brought her to a square dance, and she's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> it made all the difference. She just came. Uh, in fact, I think she saw Tony Ox and died. So that was quite a, quite something. But she was willing to go with you. That's the important part. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we've become best friends since then. She had to move her uh, her music school uh, because of COVID, and I actually helped her build the new one. So I have free voice lessons for life. I didn't realize it when uh, I was a fairly new caller and starting to get really busy. Uh, and I wanted to learn harmony. So I went to a voice teacher. I asked her, I said, can you teach me how to do harmony? She said, sure. So started doing the exercise and singing and everything. She said, you don't know how to breathe. I said, what? You don't know how to breathe. I've been breathing ever since I was a baby. Of course I know how to breathe. No, you don't know how to breathe to be a singer. And so for the next few years, we worked on that. And for some reason, the uh, triads that she would play for my exercises and working, I kind of fell into that harmony part of it along the way. But I did learn to breathe. And I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, I would not have been able to last as long as I did in the business, calling as much as I did in the business, if it hadn't been for her teaching me how to breathe. I wouldn't have had a voice left if I'd have continued doing it the way I was doing it when I first started. So there's more reasons to go to a good voice coach than just learning how to sing. That's my point there. Okay, Janet. Um, back to the question about what I would tell a new caller, in my opinion, one of the things that we realize becoming a caller that we don't know is that there are definitions to the calls because a lot of times they weren't taught correctly, they weren't taught by definition. And so having them learn what the actual definition is gives a whole new understanding of how to do the call. And like somebody had mentioned earlier, even though you say you wanna be a caller, you're gonna end up being a teacher too. And a teacher has to be able to tell or give directions so that the person on the receiving end understands what it is they are supposed to be doing. Teaching is an incentive, isn't it? You learn more from teaching somebody else how to do something than sitting there and trying to study it for yourself. If you're preparing yourself to tell somebody else how to do it, you're going to, going to be as explicit as possible when you do it. You're going to look it up. Incentive is a big thing. That, that's why, you know, I, I said earlier that calling uh, a tip at the club dance once a month, you'll never become a caller. There's not enough incentive to go home and work for a month to prepare for that. Well, so. one, of the, one of the best things I heard is there's no better way to know whether you know what you're talking about than to teach it to someone else. Yeah, and you will know, you'll learn from it. And I've had people say, new callers have no business teaching new dancers. There's no way that they'll really learn how to call unless they do. <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing. Uh, it doesn't happen automatically. You've got to have people out in front of you. And teaching them, like I say, the incentive of being prepared and not going to a bunch of new dancers and looking absolutely stupid, that's incentive. You'll go to work. You'll learn what you have to in order to do it. The rest is presentation, isn't it? So, along those lines, I guess too would be um, as someone was saying about uh, some challenge caller 
who was uh, trying to call a mainstream thing and was couldn't figure out why the dancers couldn't do it because they were saying, you know, explaining it to, uh, to a heart of a way. Um, I've had call, challenge callers come to my regular caller school uh, to learn how to call mainstream. Uh, one name dropping, uh, Barry Clasper. He said, Joe, he said, you know, I, I can call challenge. No problem. People do it. He said, but, but I get there and uh, like at a festival or whatever, and they want me to call a mainstream tip. He said, I don't know what they can do. I don't know how, how they think. You know, he was so far down the line in his dance abilities that it was difficult. And I've seen challenge callers that are, you know, just torn up a floor because they don't know what us simple <laughs> minded people think, you know, uh, how we think uh, normally. Um, uh, I, I think one of the things for teaching is, I, I like what Janet said, read the definition. I, I keep going uh, back to the definitions because sometimes they change for one thing and other times uh, I, I just need the refreshing. So I go back to those definitions myself. You know, I mean, I've been calling nearly 60 years. You would think I'd know it all. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. It just, you got to keep going. That's why we're, people like Daryl and Betsy and, uh, you know, I don't know who else is, is experienced, but that's why we keep coming on these things because we're still learning. You know, that might sound stupid, but yeah. And it's because we want to. It's not because we have to. We want to. Um, so, you know, in terms of the teaching part, yeah. Uh, I have a phrase called telling ain't teaching. In other words, just because you tell the dancers what to do, that's not teaching. Teaching is knowing why Why do they turn around when you didn't tell them to turn around? You know, pass through, you talk, pass through, and they, some of them will turn around. And say, in your head, you go like, why'd they turn around? Because they think well, they're facing out and they're wrong. It's, well, it's because they're scared. <laughs> they want to see what's going on, whatever. You know, you have to be ready to, for those things. Uh, I taught you turn back one time. I had been teaching for a number of years. There was a challenge dancer brought his daughter to the class. I taught you turn back. I, you know, I do pass through, turn around. Well, this challenge dancer turned to 360. Uh, he did it like three times. So finally I said, Maury, what are you doing? He said, I'm doing a turn around. He said, you turn around. I said, yeah. He said, no. I, I said, you turn, you got to face the other wall. He said, Oh, you mean turn halfway around? Duh. You know, simple as that. But teach yourself. Take that call if it's passed through and say, how am I going to do it? And practice it as if there was a dancer there before you ever get to the real dancers. Uh, but definitely what Daryl said, yeah, get out of your area, go where there's no other club, find somebody or, or get some guinea pigs, bring them into your, your dance hall <laughs> and practice. Uh, do it with them. Uh, I was I was really fortunate um, when I was back in Ontario. Uh, I had two uh, dancer club associations that supported my caller school by having uh, you you they could call a dance once a week. Uh, I I emceed the dances the the dancers association. Different areas clubs would host the new callers dance, and these guys would come out and the gals. And they would call, they'd get a chance to dance or call two, three tips a night every single week. Um, the other thing is uh, a number of you have said, get a mentor. I think Glenn said, yeah, get a mentor. Um, <clears throat> I've had guys come to classes and girls come to classes, watch. That's how I learned a lot of it. I went to three different callers classes and watched them teach, made notes. And uh, I used a lot of what they used. Um, I came up with some of my own. Uh, I discarded some of my own. You know, you learn as you go. So yeah, you got to get on the mic and do it. Um, I guess I guess that's probably all I have to say on that. <laughs> probably too much. Okay, Betsy. Yeah, going back, and I think what Brian also talked about getting a mentor and teaching. One of the ways that you can work with a mentor in teaching is to have them assign you a call. You would have to attend all the lessons. They would assign you a call to teach, and they would give you feedback as to what um, what you did right and what you did wrong. And then they then you would 
and they're there to pick up any any pieces that you might have left out so that the dancers don't suffer because when you get a brand new caller teaching brand new dancers there may be some lack of preciseness in the in the use of the definitions until they get used to it uh but if, if you can teach with a mentor so that you'd be doing say one tip a night and it wouldn't be the same as what daryl said about calling one one tip at a dance because you have to prepare what you're teaching you have to work with the calls that have now that the dancers have now used so that you have a goal of using as many of the Pre calls that were previously introduced as possible, along with introducing the call and teaching the call that you're teaching. So it's really a good exercise if you can get a mentor who would work with you on teaching. Perfect. Can I jump in one more time before everybody leaves? I'm gonna, Go ahead, I'm gonna stick around for a little while tonight I have a uh, presentation directed at new callers, never before callers. And I'll show some of that to you if Mark will allow me uh, the possibility to share the screen. Uh, the thing is very, very expensive. It's free. Uh, it's free and it's hopefully uh, useful to mentors in particular, even though it's for newbies, if they've got a mentor, they can both have it for free. And uh, the mentor who's not typically teaching callers will be able to explain maybe a little bit better about what this new caller needs. But I'll, I'll just quickly go through some of the slides and tell you what it's about and make it available to you. So uh, if you I stick think, around, I think I'll you're do. allowed to. Pardon? I said, I think you're allowed to. Now? I said well, after. I'm saying, yeah, after, I'm just saying, I think it's already set up for you to be able to share. Oh, okay. I'll shut up and let everybody else finish first. Well, uh, I guess this is, we're a couple minutes past the hour, but uh, we've, we've so. done our hour. So if you want to leave and you got to go, you're more than welcome to. Uh, Betsy, do you got something else? Your hand's still up? Roz does. Um, okay, Roz, go ahead. At the moment, we're doing SSD and we're teaching, and I found that very good because I'm having to make sure my choreography is the moves that they've done and not giving any that they haven't done. So you have to really think about things. But when I'm teaching a new move, I try and think about what problems there are. I had to teach square fruit and there's always problems with that. And um, one chap, he turns around on the last bit. But when I watched him, he actually hangs on to the girl's hand and doesn't let go. And because he's hanging on, it forces him around. So. I find watching what the dancers do, and of course, all the times I've been angels, you get to know what problems are anyway. So before I start teaching, I think, well, what could they do? How do I get around that? How do I prevent that? And that's been really useful. That's good. Yeah, you, you want to know where the problems are going to be before they occur so you can nip them in the bud. Um, as I've said before, the, the problem comes from who, who can cause the most trouble in any particular call. Uh, again, I, I covered that this morning uh, in part of it, like on a spin chain through. Who's the per person that's going to give you the most problem? It's the person who has the least to do. Uh, you know, they're, they're, going to, they're going to turn or keep moving or or do something they shouldn't do. Uh, so like, like uh, Ross had said, look at the calls, walk them through, walk yourself through it. You dance it through it. Dance to your own teaching. You know, I, I say dance, walk, walk through as you teach yourself a call and see what words you're using that are wrong. Uh, you know, how many basics are there? You know, there's only really th three basics. You know, walk forward, walk backward, move sideways turn around, you know, those are the basics. 
Anything else is, is some uh, build upon all those. Uh, on the square through floor, you know, well, there's, I've tried, and I'm sure some of you have tried all different methods. Put the boys all together. Put the girls all together. Uh, put them half sashayed. Uh, see what you can do. Yeah, uh, you know, I got in trouble with uh, Triangle Squares, the, the gay club in Toronto. Um, I tried what I used with my straight clubs. Uh, I, I the, you know, the boy, he'd, he'd pull by the right hand, he'd face in and pull by the left hand, and then courtesy turn. He'd do a complete 360 before he'd pull by. You know, they, they do that. It's a common thing, like a ballerina. And, and I would go off the mic and I would say, uh, look, guys, the next time any one of you turns around like that, spins around like a ballerina, I'm going to come down there and kiss you on the lips. Well, all the straight clubs, that helped a lot. It was not a good thing to say at my, my gay club. And they said, God, call square through, call square through. You know, so, you know, but you can make fun and have fun with those things. But find out where are the trouble spots before, because you, you know, it's like the, the courtesy turn. You know, how, how hard is it? It's teaching a courtesy turn by itself with nothing else is the hardest thing in the world to tell the guy what to do is that for me. But, you know, if you teach wheel around first, you got the call made. And you can dance for hours using wheel arounds. I mean, it's dancing, you know, wheel around. Then the next thing you tell them is, you know, you know put your hand here, put your hand there, and whatever. It, it just makes things easier. So I don't teach square through. Um, well, I don't teach the, the right and left through anyhow before I teach square through. I teach square through first because so many times they pull by with the right and the guy just automatically wants the courtesy turn a girl. You know, it's, it's, in here somewhere in one of those brain cells that doesn't have you don't have control over and we're just going to do it guys we know we like to right and left through we like to turn the girls so when you call square through i'm probably going to want to turn a girl uh, so good point ross excellent yeah the problem the problems with square through are are built into the call yeah if they hang on, if they hang on on the first hand or the third hand, the person on the right side, normally one dancing the woman's part, gets pulled out of position. If they hang on in the second hand, the guy gets pulled out of position and he blends into a courtesy turn. And nobody hangs on on the fourth hand because you're going to go do something else. Now, if you went for square through five, the guy would have a problem on after hand number four also. Yeah. I actually teach I actually teach square through one and two first and then go on to three and four. It doesn't it doesn't always help. I start I do most of my teaching in the Sicilian circle and I start my square throughs with the square through five and a square through three. Because that last hand I say move on to the next. So they're not tempted to turn. They're getting the feeling that on that last hand, they're going to move forward. So uh, that's one of the benefits of the Sicilian circle right there. Is anybody interested in seeing that uh, presentation? Sure. A few, okay. Well, I'm going to do it quickly because I still have to cook dinner. Okay, share screen. Oh, Lordy, that's it right there. Okay. This is fairly long. I'm not going to put you through all of it here, but uh, ah, get back up there. That's me. Nothing there. Uh, table contents, uh, the different things that are going to be in it, uh, the fact that this is uh about the modular method of calling which i said everything is modules so that explains that here are the abbreviations as they are used in the uh, document and something about the terminology very little but this is a resource it's if somebody says something uh and you don't know what it is you can go there and take a look for it and I think these are fairly well updated to uh, today's uh, terminology. 
Here it does explain what Thazer is. And uh, basically what it says, if nothing else, is that it, Thazer is nothing but a way for communicating with other callers. It's not, it's not a movement. Uh, it isn't any one thing. It's constantly changing. There are very common phasers, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, communication tool. This goes into the square, the static square, what we call it, and sequence, in and out. Um, most of these slides has a uh, vocal to it also. You just go down here, you click on, oh, I don't know if that's going to let me do it or not here. Slide number five. Okay, did you hear that? Yes. Okay. Uh, most of these slides have uh, a short vocal on it explaining what's going to happen on the slide anyway. This is an explanation of diagonal opposites, uh, also known as mirror image, because that's a very, very important part of understanding our choreography and the way the square is laid out in that grid. And why you can call to four dancers instead of eight dancers. If you ask a uh, dancer how many in the square, they'll say eight, and they think in terms of eight dancers. Callers need to be able to think in terms of four dancers. It's going to make it easier. And that's what we call to anyway, most of the time. The uh, well, where did I get off to here? The grid and grid boxes. This explains, uh, if, if for no other reason, uh, what we're talking about when we start talking the grid and the boxes that are within it. This, uh, how the formations are relative to the grid. There are no ocean waves here, but the grid still exists. And even though they're in these ocean waves, the grid is still east and west there. So it goes into that and it shows some different examples of that. And he lost part of his hair, that guy down there. Oh, never mind. Uh, chicken plucker, to me, the basic traffic pattern, the basis of all of the movement and why. And here it is called the basic traffic pattern. Uh, chicken plucker halfway, in other words, that uh, right-hand lady box or across the street box. Uh, how you can do a star through pass through to get there without doing the square through four and a right and left through pass through trade by. Uh, so all of this is in there. Okay, enough about what we call. Let's talk about how we call. Let's start calling. And these uh, links here are to actual musical vocals that uh, uh, gives a feeling for how to deliver these movements within the rhythm like a good caller should. Uh, there's a reason why the boom chuck or the 2-4 rhythm is so prominent in what we do. And that has to do with not only the names of the movements and how we deliver them, but how to make it fit to that rhythm and fit to the music, all right? And there is a section. Uh, Joe can check me out on these things and maybe make some suggestions how I can say it better. I don't know. But if you get a chance, you might want to listen to those. And we have uh, a drill for the brand new caller to go through. Heads move up to the middle and back. Two, three, four. Square through and count to four in your head. One, two, three, four. Right, left, through and turn the girl. Pass through, trade by, right, left, through with the outside two. Timing. So that is, that's included in there. Choose your music wisely. It's all about the rhythm. You can dance to rhythm. You don't have to have melody or music or chords or anything else. You can dance to somebody pounding on a wooden log. 
if the rhythm is constant. Delivering, you can deliver to the rhythm as long as it's constant. Okay, timing and delivery. This explains that two four rhythm and bow to the partner corner two and how we use that the down and the up of the rhythm in order to deliver the movements to where they sound like they're part of the music. This is an extension of the same thing. The whole figure right there. This is your basic traffic pattern, your chicken plucker. And modules. We explain what modules are. And a lot of the, this is a lot for a brand new caller. Like I say, it can be a resource for them to look up this stuff when they hear something that uh, uh, they don't understand. They can go to this and hopefully look it up and find out what the heck it is that caller was trying to tell them. Modules. Why are modules important? Uh, what I hope is a good explanation of modules. The different, uh, the main different types here, which is equivalent zeros, technical zeros. I do have the, uh, down towards the end of it, we have the conversion modules, the geographic modules, the inversion modules, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The basic traffic pattern with modules in mind, how to put them into that traffic pattern. Modules at work, uh, quite a bit on modules, but I said early that it, it's based on the modular uh, method of calling. Got some modules listed here, square through equivalents, right line, blah, 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 blah. Here we got the flow, conversion, inversion, rotation, fractional, and get out modules. Explaining what they're talking about, explaining how to use them. Alaman left. And it's one of the last things that I put in the presentation here. But guess what? It's the last thing you want to do when you're calling, too, isn't it? Alamant left. So this is an explanation of uh, what I was saying earlier about there being two Alamant lefts and uh, how they fit into what we do, particularly within that traffic pattern. And this is just a finished page. says, thank you very much. And uh, this... This whole presentation, as such, is available in the uh, Caller Lab database. Guess what? For free. So you can look at it. Uh, you don't put any money out for it. If it works for you, you got it for free. If it doesn't work for you, you can hit the little delete button and you don't have to worry about it any longer. So with that said, any questions? If we wanted to go find that presentation in the Caller Lab Knowledge Database, what would we search on? Caller Lab, they, uh, knowledge base. No, what would we type in to search for it? Uh, go to the uh, knowledge base in Caller Lab and yeah. paste it in there uh, under my name. Uh, I've looked it up. I don't. I didn't have a whole lot of trouble finding the knowledge base in Caller Lab. Once you find it, there's pretty good listing of what's in it. Yeah, but you you can you can search with keywords. I think they were looking for what you would say the keywords were. Okay, let me tell Darryl, you. What, maybe search for, for Daryl Clendenin. Just a moment here. At, at the top, uh, it had for the yeah. newbie caller. So it's it might be for the newbie caller. Yeah. Okay. Not newbie caller. So that could be a key word. Yes. Key phrase. Casey, what do you got? I can't hear you very well. Oh. Yeah, I just had to get the unmute button. Yeah, one of the things that uh, that I've noticed, and I've just looked up the current version of Square Through. Um, a lot of people, a lot of callers, will say, "On the last hand, don't turn." And in fact, it's actually on the first hand that you don't turn because the turn comes before every subsequent part of the movement. So the first part of each segment of the square through is a turn and pull by. So every one of them finishes with a pull by. Yeah, I, I, I actually say that you only turn if you want to continue. 
which kind of makes sense. It's what you just said, but it, it's a said it in a slightly different way. You know, back when I was starting to teach, there was actually a comma in the correct place. And that's why it's important when you're reading definitions to read the grammar as well. Yeah, I've been teaching the square through as per the definition, like John said, but a couple of our other callers teach it differently. Like they'll say square through one has got the turn, which it hasn't. Square through one straight, straight across, it's a pull by. So I'm hoping that my dancers don't get confused by it being taught different ways by the callers. I think they'll adjust. They have to, I guess. <laughs> So, but, I mean, one, one of the callers was calling it and I'm looking at John and he's looking at me going, that's not the definition. <laughs> it's the same as eight chain one, isn't it? Yep. Mm. And I remember people it's saying, don't pattern. say don't, because yeah. if you say don't turn around, that what they hear is turn around. So. I like, Daryl, I, I like that. Um, Whole presentation thing. Um, my my um, disclaimer or warning to anybody is the same as ever. Uh, when I first saw that first slide, um, you scared the heck out of me. You know all those words. And I thought, oh my god. But then, uh, as I see it progressing, I I uh, got less scared. And so my my uh, uh, suggestion is is to look at all of these things and the same with any color lab material that goes on and, and is very, very uh, detailed is you treat it the same way as you eat an elephant, it's one leg at a time. I think probably if you uh, heard the uh, vocal that's on the bottom of the screen, it says, don't get hung up on this. <laughs> uh, you know, this is just a listing of the different stuff. And of course, if you get a uh, CB in parentheses someplace, uh, you can go back and take a look, see that that's a corner box, that's all. Mm -hmm. And by the time they get through the presentation, hopefully they will have all of the current uh, terminology because they've said, well, I need to know what that's standing for. They go back and they find out. Learn, learning as you go in the bits and pieces as you go along, uh, is probably the best way to do most of what we learn as callers. Uh, we have Tuesday night callers sessions that Yolanda was talking about. And I keep saying it's all bits and pieces. If we can just teach you in bits and pieces and have you figure out how to put those together, that's, that's what we do. It, it's all little things, you know. Uh, but we try to say, okay, you need to learn all of this all at once. No, you don't have to. Take the, take the basic, take the nice and easy, put the pieces, know where you can put the pieces and just put them together. That's what it's about. Uh, we make it harder than it really is. Uh, I guess we like it that way. I don't know. Well, it's like a caller, you know, we, we, we want to tell people everything we know so they they can enjoy it as much as we do. But, you know, when you teach a thing like, say, teacup chain, you don't have them standing there while you tell them every part of the call. You break it down like you do Grand Square, maybe have the sides, you know, heads first and then the sides next. I don't know. Maybe other people teach Grand Square for all eight dancers. I never do. I start with the sides. And I make them do it until they can dance it part way and I have the heads watching. And then I get sides out and I say, heads, come on in. You're going to do the same thing backwards. And right away they go like, wow. But they get through it. And then when they finally put it together, I, I, I say, now you look at, um, I've never actually done it with all eight dances before. So I don't know if this even works. But, you know, when I say sides face, sides face each other. And when I say grand square, then everybody start moving. Heads, you're going to go forward. Sides, you're going to back up. And I hope it works. And uh, my, I, I tell them, the, the major thing is, if you get going in this call, and you're powerhousing along and having a great time, and all of a sudden you get lost, get out of the way. <laughs> you're like, wow. Because <laughs> there's other people, they'll, they'll knock you over. They, they're on a mission. So, you know, you make a big shtick out of the thing. But... Um, 
with, with any of these things, uh, it's the same with, like Daryl said, with it's bits and pieces, you know? So we really have to help those new callers with minimalistic information to start with. You can't scare them away with phasar and all kinds of things. I, I've read some caller notes where they've gone into the psychology of it and all. And, and uh, you know, my, uh, I don't know if it was my fifth or sixth life that I went back to school for a psychology. Yeah, you know, you don't need all that stuff. You you need basic, you know, why did they do that? Well, think about it. Psychology. Yeah, yeah. So, anyhow, you know, I'm, I'm going to use that stuff, Daryl. I, I love it. It looks great. Well, yeah, uh, I, I was serious. Go through the uh, part about the music, the voice to music. Okay, yeah, it looks, uh, looks perfect. Well, but I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Please uh, do. Darryl? And, and don't be afraid to uh, make corrections to me. Send them to me. Daryl? Yes. Uh, can I put that on uh, the Orange County Callers website? Sure. Absolutely. I, uh, uh, hey, gang, I, I've had a absolutely fantastic life in the activity and i mean uh, it was it was my whole life still right about now and i'm i'm that close to being out of it uh, i always said i'll never quit it but it might quit me well thanks to the pandemic it's pretty much quitting me so uh, my days on the microphone are numbered if not for age but just the the situation these days but if i can help anybody else uh hey I, i've always been willing to help i i've always enjoyed training callers uh yeah anything i've got is yours uh, i just don't want to scare anybody off i don't want to make it hard the easier i can make it the happier i'm going to be so that's why I'm always saying for the newbies, keep it simple. Uh, these sessions, Zoom sessions are all interesting and I, I enjoy sitting in on them and making the occasional comment. But my mind is with the brand new callers always, always. So with that gang, like I said, I still have dinner to uh, prepare, so I'm going to let you go, and you can carry on without Daryl for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with me. It's been fun. Bye. Bye, Daryl. Bye, Daryl. Yep. Thank you. See you Tuesday. You bet.